Hi folks, this is Mark Smith with Family Tree Counseling Associates. You can see from the background that I'm not in my normal place where I make videos, which is at my home. Um, I'm at my office. Um, by the way, the pretty painting back there with the orange, my daughter painted that. Um, so um, I don't have a real fun topic uh, today, in my opinion. Um, no poetry. Uh, we're we're going to be talk about talking about financial destruction, and that's a tough topic. So the title of the video is "Overcoming the Financial Tsunami of Narcissistic Abuse." So I have a quote and I have a disclaimer. So the disclaimer goes like this. I'm going to be sharing my pain about what I went through. And a lot of you um, were financially harmed a lot worse than what I was. A lot of you would say, dude, you ain't seen nothing. I, I don't have a place to live. I don't, I don't have uh, food to eat. I, I'm having a hard time putting a roof over the head of my children. Um, I don't have a job. So in no way am I trying to minimize your pain and your dire circumstances. Uh, if anything, uh, I'm trying to help you. Um, so my, my circumstances weren't that bad. They could have been. It came pretty close to being that bad. But I, I just, I just want it's something I haven't talked about and I just wanted to cover one of the worst ways you can be harmed in narcissistic abuse, and that's being harmed financially. So um, try not to judge. If, if, if I sound like a, a guy who really hasn't been harmed that much, because trust me when I tell you that, that I've, I've suffered a lot financially, even if I still have some means left. The quote I want to read is from a blog uh, by a guy named Trent Ham, and he wrote, any addiction is a danger to long-term personal financial stability. If you have a compulsion to commit a non-vital behavior, particularly one that requires you to lay out money, it's a massive risk not only to you, but to everyone around you. So why am I talking about addiction when the topic is narcissistic abuse? Because almost all of us could talk about how we were addicted to a narcissistic person or a borderline uh, person and that addiction caused us to not see red flags, it caused us to stay too long, it caused us to, in my case, um, shell out a lot of money uh, in relationships that that's what they were there for. They were there for being taken care of financially. So I want to go back in time to August of 2007. And uh, I've been involved with various narcissistically abusive relationships for really about 12 years now. And, but, but in 2007, uh, I was uh, married and had been fairly uh, happily married for 25 years, uh, maybe 20 years at that, 22 years at that point. Um, we had zero debt because my wife was very financially frugal and responsible. Um, we had a beautiful $500,000 house that was like a villa, and it had a beautiful pool and it had a hot tub, and my kids loved the pool. Um, so then I became emotionally entangled with a really severe borderline and this was the second entanglement that had happened, and my, my soon-to-be ex-wife was about over that. She was about through with that. 
but my addiction to my wounded, needy little boy getting attention from the borderline was more important than my financial security. It was more important ultimately at that time, unfortunately, than the happiness and safety of my children. It was more important than the happiness and the safety of my 22 year, really 25 year counting dating uh, partner in life. And I don't have shame about that, but boy, do I, I sure do have a lot of regret. So I then was uh, uh, not acting sane. I was acting um, like an addict. And all I wanted was to get more of Christie's attention. And so I was in such a hurry to get divorced that I cut a really bad deal. I didn't listen to my attorney. I didn't take my time. I wanted to spend time with Christy, and she said she wouldn't spend time with me unless we were, unless I was divorced. And the truth was, she didn't really want to spend time with me. That she um, was emotionally enthralled with somebody else. Um, so that fits the family profile of needing to be abandoned by somebody who has somebody else. So um, I, I thought uh, at that time in my own um, unhealthiness and arrogance, uh, I thought that I had more resources than I did. I bought a house and after paying my ex-wife for uh, her percentage of the, the practice, I found myself $122,000 in debt. And, and I woke up one point and just said, wow. Um, I, I remember uh, talking on the phone with a credit card guy, and they had always been really nice before, but then because I was overextended, they forwarded me to the not so nice department. <laughs> and this guy was just like brutal and mean and harsh and, and then it dawned on me you know really what condition that I was in and so it took me seven years of hard work and cutting back spending to bail myself out slowly dig myself out from hundred and twenty two thousand dollars in debt my former therapist Rick Gustason gave me this little uh, marble or granite uh, uh, trophy thing it says congratulations. I think somebody had given it to him related to a, a milestone in his recovery process. And when I dug myself out of debt, uh, Rick gave me this, and it's always been really special to me. So, um, however, during those those seven years of getting out of debt, I got involved with Betsy. So, so, so I had a woman using me for finances who didn't really love me, and I didn't really know that. And so I had a vampire sucking blood, sucking finances from me, and I still was able to, to dig myself out of debt. So um, I guess what I'm saying is um, it doesn't matter in life how much you make. It, you, it matters how much you keep. And there's a lot of people who've made a lot less money than me who've been able to keep their resources. And one of the best ways you can do that is not get a divorce. But when you're addicted to borderlines and when you're involved in relationships with users and scammers and scannivers, it will absolutely positively destroy your finances. And I know I'm mainly speaking to women on YouTube. It's you know almost 70% women. And I know many of your situations as you've been involved with a really bad narcissistic man who's had money and power and lawyers. And you got the very short end of the stick financially. And he's got the house and he's got the career and he's making the money and you're living in poverty. I know that. I empathize with you. I hear you. Um, so then I experienced the shattering on April 26th of 2015. And so 
So one tsunami came through in 2007, and it took seven years to clean up, and then along comes another tsunami. And um, so I, uh, I ended up having to spend probably around $60,000 in various treatments and therapies and treatment centers and I couldn't work. And I'm in a business that if, if I don't work, I don't get paid. You know, I'm in private practice. So uh, I've worked with clients who, who had jobs and they can apply for the Family Leave Act and get medical coverage and get full payment of their, um, their salary and take months off. That, that really wasn't my situation. Um, so then I came back to my practice and I had three clients because when you suffer from narcissistic abuse people think you're crazy and, and I sort of for a time ruined my reputation in the Indianapolis area as hey that guy was a really good marriage counselor but then he went through a divorce which isn't that big a deal for marriage counselors it was the erratic behavior um, the being shattered into a billion pieces, um, the over-focusing on the uh, borderline and her narcissistic partner. So um, I also uh, had had uh, four associates leave the previous August. So six months before I was shattered, four associates left, which happens about every 10 years. People want to launch out on their own. But then when people saw how broken and erratic and dysfunctional I was, three more associates left. So family tree was sort of hanging by a thread. And when I was in a treatment center, uh, Andy Holzman, my right-hand man, wrote a big check to, to cover things until I got back. And Jerry Wise pitched in some money as well. And my assistant, Jeff, was left to worry and to keep the place organized and functioning and the bills being paid. So at the end of it, I found myself ironically exactly $122,000 in debt. And it has, and, and I was $10,000 behind in the office rent. And I had a cute little car, a Kia Soul, I had to sell it. Um, during this time, if I get a credit card offer, you know, like when you're on Amazon and you apply, I would get denied because they're, they're, they, they'd say, dude, you're, you're a bad credit risk. So um, I guess what I'm saying, the, the, the message isn't avoid tsunamis. The, the tsunamis have happened. The message is um, you can dig yourself out. Um, one of the uh, uh, little fortune cookie sayings that I have taped on my mirror, it says, through integrity and hard work, your credits are piling up. And so what that means to, to me, uh, uh, having credits in your bank account is a way of sort of getting credits in your life. It's, it's a, finances are a tangible measure of your hard work, your wisdom, your thriftiness, your ingenuity, and hopefully your sobriety, most important of all. Um, so uh, since December of last year, when my recovery really kicked in, um, uh, the recovery, the rebuilding from the tsunami is well on its way, and I'm, I'm really blessed. We've added two wonderful new therapists, Karen Henry Smith and Peg Nicodemus. You guys have seen those ladies uh, online on our channel. Uh, and then also Renda Hall, who is here, has had her practice thrive and blow up and get really big and she has some of our most popular YouTube videos and then Jerry Wise was able to go full-time with us um, 
I know that my situation is different because um, I've been able to tap into the magical power of YouTube and uh, any of you out there who have a lot of insight and wisdom and knowledge about narcissistic abuse, start a channel um, and start talking about your experience from your heart. I didn't even know what narcissistic abuse was 13 months ago. I hate that picture, by the way. Um, and then I read the book Psychopath Free by Jackson McKenzie. Um, I was able to pay all of the $10,000 in back rent. Um, I've been able to locate a therapist who's through my insurance plan, who's a great therapist who does EMDR, but it just calls, costs me $20. Um, and I'm still probably about $90,000 in debt, but everything is moving in the right direction so the number one thing you need to do if you've experienced the tsunami of financial destruction from narcissistic abuse is go no contact the second thing you need to do is get healthy in your complex ptsd so that your hands don't tremble and you're not sick often you don't walk around with a knot in your chest and the next thing you need to do is just put one foot in front of another. Just take baby steps. I would love to be completely out of debt now, but it's probably going to take me four or five more years to recover from the tsunami that I experienced. But I just, I just put one foot in front of another, and I live life with integrity, and I work really hard. And even though I'm still in debt, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm thriving. So, so my message to you guys is do what you can. Heal your symptoms. You don't have to go to fancy treatment centers. Do meditation. Do yoga. Watch YouTube videos. Listen to really good books about narcissistic abuse. Um, Sahidra... Uh, 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 Robbie uh, has written a new book on narcissistic abuse called Becoming uh, a Narcissist Nightmare that I can recommend for you. Um, the other thing that, that I'm starting to do is uh, to be in relationship uh, with people, with, with a particular person who, who isn't a vampire, who's, who's good and solid and and uh, somebody who um, I don't have to lay out resources for. They're not, they're not trading love for money. The, 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 it's genuine. So um, as long as you feel as if you've been victimized uh, and, and, and you feel all of these symptoms, it's going to paralyze you. And there's, there's going to be a tendency to want to give up and to sort of wallow in hopelessness. And this is where you have to become Superman or Superwoman. This is where you have to have fire in your belly. And, you know, I borrowed money from my son to go to a treatment center. I borrowed money from about four or five people just to get through the year. <laughs> I borrowed money from a lot of credit card companies. But you know what? What I learned about myself and how much I've healed was worth what I paid for it. It was worth the financial tsunami. And that's what I encourage you guys to do is be proactive, understand that this is something you needed to go through to heal and to learn the truth about yourself and then just put one foot in front of another. If, if all you can do is have a job that doesn't pay that much, but it pays the, the rent, and it, it, it puts gas in the car, then, then you're a hero. Um, we had this fellow in group, and he, he was going through a divorce, and he was very financially strapped, and 
um, wasn't looking out well for himself. He, he was uh, remodeling a place, and we affectionately in our men's group called, he called it Wolf Piss Manor because the owner of the uh, place had a wolf and had uh, uh, peed all over the house. So it was a nasty place, but, but this courageous, strong man, he just put one foot in front of another, and now he, he texted me recently, he's buying a home and he's happy and he's thriving because he didn't give up. So um, I, I, my goal for this video is to give you guys hope. And I know my circumstances are a bit different, but um, trust me, uh, 13 months ago, I was thinking about uh, filing bankruptcy, closing family tree, moving to Myrtle Beach, and going on disability because my, my body and my mind were that destroyed, my finances were that destroyed. I didn't see how I could continue to handle the responsibility of owning Family Tree. I met with uh, four associates and was discussing selling it to them. But if you get healthy, if you get sober in your mind, if you go no contact, if you heal through all the things you know to do that you can afford, the yoga, the meditation, crying tears, my friend, doesn't cost you any money at all. Watching YouTube videos really doesn't cost you any money at all. You put one foot in front of another and you fix the problem. If the problem was that you were overly financially dependent upon a manipulative monster, Get the monster out of your life and heal yourself and then get in a relationship with somebody who's not a monster, somebody who's stable and loving and financially sound and financially responsible. Digging out from your particular financial tsunami, it might take seven years. And if you've gone through it several times, it might for me, it'll probably be 10, 11, 12 years of digging out. But I know I'm going to get there. And I've made great strides this year. It's rolling a boulder downhill at this point. Um, not because of any great talent that I have or any great luck that I have. It's the power of recovery. It's the power of knowing who I am and where I came from that I was not victimized by anybody that I was uh, in a relationship with th that was a narcissist or borderline and that by really being determined and working hard and being resourceful and being creative, you can thrive not only emotionally, you can thrive relationally in a relationship with a non-predator and yes, folks, you can even thrive financially. I imagine I'm going to get a lot of response to this video because there's so much pain out there and there's so much hopelessness. But you're an adult and I know you guys are smart and talented and res resourceful. You just have to believe. So set your sights on a goal through integrity and hard work your credits can pile up. I'm going to head to the gym, play some basketball. Uh, thank you for watching. If you haven't joined our YouTube channel, please do that. It's uh, Family Tree Counseling on YouTube. And uh, I have several books. I have a really good book on abandonment, a really good book on shame of couples fighting back and forth and uh, misinterpreting and miscommunicating. And I have a good book on affair recovery at FamilyTreeCounseling.com. Uh, I wish you prosperity, my friends. I wish you to thrive financially. I'll keep you in touch with my digging out process, but I know it's going to happen, and it can happen for you too. Have a wonderful day, and God bless.